do we live in a universe or is there a vast multitude of universes out there that we can't see? Well, that's an outstanding scientific question that a lot of scientific minds are pouring resources and investment trying to answer and understand that question. To get a good handle on it though, we need to know what the multiverse is. And in order to know what the multiverse is, we have to talk about, figure out how we define our universe. And to do that, we're going to need a tool or we're going to need to understand a principle. And that principle can be illustrated by imagining or remembering, if you have, being in a lightning storm. Now, in, when you're in a lightning storm, there are two ways that you can measure the storm, if you will. You can watch out and you see the lightning, or you can listen and you can hear the thunder. And very often you'll sit there and you'll see the lightning and then you'll count and figure out how long it took for the thunder to get here and that tells you how far away it is. And the reason that works is that the light travels to you much faster than the sound does. Now if you put it in a little bit of a different context or look at it a little differently, the light is giving you a picture of the storm at a certain time. But if you're listening to the thunder, you're getting a picture of the storm at a slightly earlier time because the sound from the, th the thunder fr that comes when the lightning happens takes longer to reach to you. So by listening, you're actually hearing things a little bit further back than by watching the lightning. Now, the reason why that works is because the sound travels more slowly than the light. But it turns out that the light itself actually takes time to travel. For here on Earth, that's largely irrelevant, but as we begin looking out at objects out in the heavens, we realize that it takes a substantial amount of time. Go out to the closest object to us, the moon. When we're looking out at the moon, it's a little over 200,000 miles away from us. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. So we're seeing the light from the sun, or the light from the moon takes about a second to travel to us. Or stated another way, we're actually seeing the moon as it appeared a little over one second ago. If we move out and look at the sun, the light there takes between eight and eight and a half minutes to get to us. And so if the sun were to go out right now, you would know it for eight to eight and a half minutes because that's how long it takes the light from the sun to travel from the sun to you. And so you're actually seeing the sun as it appears eight, a little over eight minutes ago. Well, we can extend that principle out further. The further out we look, the further back in time we're seeing. If we go back and look at the closest large galaxy to us, the Andromeda galaxy, the light from the Andromeda galaxy takes two and a half million years to travel from the Andromeda to us. So again, we're seeing it, we're seeing the Andromeda galaxy as it looked two and a half million years ago. Moving out a little further, we can go out and look at uh, uh, one of the, the, the more spectacular astronomical images taken, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Now this, this image here is actually takes up the amount of space of about 1 50th of the moon, or if you were to line it up across the moon, it would, it would be about 1 7th the diameter of the moon. And it's, there's a thousand or about 10,000 objects in this image and most of those are galaxies, all but maybe a handful are stars. And so we're seeing very, very distant galaxies and some of these galaxies are very red. Some of them are incredibly distant. In fact, the light from some of these galaxies has taken upwards of 12 billion years to travel from that galaxy to us. So as we look at those particular galaxies, again, we're seeing them as they were 12 billion years ago. And if we keep pushing back further and further out, asking how far away can we see, we eventually run into the cosmic microwave background radiation. Now that radiation has taken just, uh, just right at 13.7 billion years to reach us. And so again, we're seeing, this is a picture of the universe, if you will, from 13.7 billion years ago. Now, Given that the universe is only 13.7 billion years old, we can only go a little bit further than the cosmic microwave background radiation and eventually we reach a place where because the universe has a beginning, that there's a certain age to it, that if we try to look any further, the light from objects any further have not had time to traverse the distance from that object to us. And so what we can define is an observable universe. And the observable universe is simply the furthest reaches that an object at that distance, the light from objects at that distance, could have traveled to Earth in, that, in, the, in the age of the universe. With that definition in hand now, 
anything that the light has had time to reach the earth, we can now begin to ask the question, what is the multiverse? Well, now we could imagine if we were instantaneously transported out to the edge of the observable universe, we would probably see more space and time and matter and energy very similar to what we see. And we can ask the question, how big might that be? And, and uh, there's, there would be other regions outside of our observable universe that are the size of our observable universe. And so that would be one way of defining the multiverse. So it's, it's the stuff beyond what we can see, but it's largely space, time, matter, and energy, very similar to what we would see in our universe. It's just far enough away that we can't see it. Now, we could imagine to take all of that stuff that kind of looks like our, the space-time matter energy of our observable universe and ask, is it possible that maybe there's something else? Maybe even with all of that stuff, all of this stuff that constitutes the observable universe and the stuff like it, maybe there are things completely separate from that. That there are other universes, completely different laws of physics, other space-time dimensionality, maybe there's no matter, maybe there's only energy. Uh, those would be other universes. And so, we, when we talk about the multiverse, we can define at least two different kinds of multiverse. And broadly speaking, the multiverse is just simply physical realms beyond the observable universe. So there we have a good definition. The observable universe is all the stuff that we could possibly see from Earth. The multiverse is just anything beyond that region. Now, there are two different kinds that are fairly popular in the scientific literature. There's the level one, which I will, I'll refer to as a level one multiverse, which is just the other stuff that's like our universe or our observable universe just far enough away that we can't see it. That's kind of a level one. That's a controversial or non-controversial scientific multiverse. Uh, it would be very surprising if that sort of multiverse doesn't exist. Typically when scientists talk about the multiverse, they're talking about a level two. Those with other universes, with different laws of physics. These are infinitely far away from us. These are not things that uh, we could instantaneously be transported. And if we were, it would look nothing like our universe. And so we've got this level one multiverse, which is just more of the same region of space beyond what we can see. And then there's the level two multiverse, which is other universes with different laws of physics and different dimensionalities, different constants. It looks very different from our universe. So there we have it. We have a good definition for our universe. We have a good definition for how to define the multiverse, what actually it is. And the, one of the big questions is, how does this interact with the Christian faith? Well, when we look at scripture, we see that God's certainly capable of creating a multiverse. After all, he talks about creating a new heaven and new earth, which is going to be completely separate from this universe. He's created the angelic realm. And the fact that God's capable of creating the multiverse and shows us that he will do something like that in the future gives us impetus actually to go out and study what does the multiverse have to say? Did God create a multiverse here? How do we answer these questions? We can, as Christians, we can go out confident knowing that as we explore his creation, we'll get a greater and better understanding of how God actually made this universe.